This is the MCHOS A68 Turbo, and it might just be the best keyboard that MCHOS has ever made. But is it worth it? Let's find that out. But before we get into the video, I do want to mention that this keyboard was sent out to me free of charge by MCHOS, but I am not being paid and every pin and given is mine and mine alone. So without further ado, let's get into the unboxing. When first opening the box, you'll see a quick start guide. Under that is an envelope with a few manuals. There are a few stickers. And under that is the keyboard itself packaged really well with a plastic dust cover on top of it. The keyboard also comes wrapped in plastic, which I went ahead and took off. Lastly, in the accessories box are a few things. First is a USB-A to USB-C cable. Two extra switches and a pretty standard keycap and switch puller. With that out of the way, let's first get into the build of the MCHOS A68. The entire case is made from a pretty heavyweight CNC aluminum and comes in at a weight of three pounds. And compared to my other aluminum keyboards, it's also pretty short, which for a person who doesn't use wrist rests like me, it makes it a lot more comfortable to use. On the left and right side of the case are four screws for taking the keyboard apart, as well as a few angular cutouts. Moving to the back is a USB-C port for the detachable cable, some A68 branding, as well as a keyboard wide RGB bar, which you can fully cut customize in the MCHOS web software, which we'll go over a little later in the video. The bar itself gets pretty bright at max brightness, and in my opinion, it's a pretty cool addition to the keyboard. On the bottom of the case are four rubber feet, a few bits of branding, as well as a grill design cutout in the aluminum. On the top left side of the keyboard is a scroll wheel, which by default is set to volume control, but you can super easily customize it to basically any input you could possibly want in the software as well. Personally, I don't really like the placement of the knob, because whether you're scrolling to the left or right, you're either not going to have much space for your finger to start the scroll because of the escape key or if you're scrolling the other way you like always hit the escape key with your finger and it's just kind of uncomfortable i'm also right-handed and it's kind of awkward reaching over or using my left hand to use it below that dial is a button to change between three separate profiles which again can be fully customized in the software this button allows you to super easily and quickly change between a ton of different set settings for each profile like rgb lighting different actuation points or enabled or disabled hall effect features so if you're someone that either wants to or does go into the software every time you're i don't know working because you don't want certain features on and when you're gaming because you want features on then this button honestly will be very helpful when changing profiles, the three lights below the button will also light up with the current activated profile, so you basically always know which profile you're in. The keycaps on the A68 Turbo are made from a double shot PBT material and have a very standard texture to them with pretty simple looking gamer style legends. Under the switches, which we'll go over in a minute, are the south facing RGB diodes. Just like the bar on the back of the keyboard, these RGBs get pretty bright at their max brightness, and again, just like the bar on the back can also be fully customized in the software. The stabilizers in this keyboard are also surprisingly good. They're clip-in, which makes them really easy to remove or replace if you'd like to do that, but they're also pre-lubed impressively well, feel really nice with zero scraping or any bad feeling to them, and sound really nice, which you'll hear the sound of the keyboard uh, a little later in the video. The top plate is also made from aluminum, just like the entire case, and the PCB is fully hot swappable with basically any magnetic switch. While it is possible to change the switches, and they will technically still work, MCHOS recommends not doing so because the switches that come with the keyboard have been specifically tested and calibrated to work perfectly with the pulling rate and the sensors that are in this keyboard. Speaking of switches, when buying the A68 Turbo, you have the option to choose between two, either the Polaris switches or the Mount Tai GT switches. Both options are magnetic switches, but in my keyboard, I personally have the Mount Tai GT switches. So in this video, we're only gonna go over the specifics of those. For my time using them, I've noticed that they have a super quick and snappy feeling to them because of their actuation force only being 35 grams. Since they're magnetic, they have an adjustable actuation point from 3.4 millimeters to 0.2 millimeters and they also have a lifespan of over 100 million clicks, which is pretty standard for high-end magnetic switches. Overall, I've genuinely had a great time using these, especially for gaming because of the low actuation force. But when buying the A68 Turbo, when choosing what switches you want, it's not as simple as just choosing which one you prefer. Depending on what you choose, the keyboard will either have an 8000 Hz pulling rate with the Polaris switches, or the world's first 16000 Hz pulling rate with the Mount Tai GT switches. With this keyboard having the genuinely insanely high 16000 Hz its pulling rate. The latency is also the lowest I've ever seen on any keyboard ever, 
being only 0.06 milliseconds. And while realistically your brain probably can't tell the difference between an already really fast 8000 hertz bowling rate, it is still incredibly impressive how far they've pushed these sensors. One thing to keep in mind though is with this high of a pulling rate, you do have to make sure either your PC case or your motherboard has a USB 3.0 port, because if you don't, you won't be able to even enable the 16,000 hertz pulling rate. If you have even a relatively modern PC, this is not something you should worry about. But just in case some of you are rocking some really old hardware, that is something to note. When first opening the software with the 16,000 hertz pulling rate version of this keyboard, you'll also need to download the USB 3.0 driver to enable the 16,000 hertz pulling rate. When I first did this, I actually couldn't get it working correctly, but to prevent what happened to me happening to you, all you need to do is download the file from the prompt, extract the folder in File Explorer, rename the file, and move it out of the folder. After doing that, it downloaded perfectly fine, but this is something you probably will need to do, so just keep that in mind. I'd also recommend using either a really high quality cable or the cable that was included with the keyboard, just to make sure there's no compatibility issues. Before we go over more features in the software, I also want to give you the promised sound test of this keyboard. So here it is. The MCHOS A68 Turbo is compatible with the MCHOS web software and the downloadable driver. However, personally, I much prefer just opening a bookmarked web software to real quick change my settings. But if you do prefer the downloadable driver, I'm sure it's not much different. Since this is a Hall Effect keyboard in the software are, of course, a lot of Hall Effect specific features like adjustable actuation, which I mentioned when talking about the switches, but there's also rapid trigger, which lets you completely change the reset point of a switch. There's SOCD, which lets you bind two of the opposite movement keys together like W and S or A and D. After doing that, the switch that is last pressed out of the two will take priority and disable the other one, even if you're technically still holding them both down. There's MT, which lets you have two separate inputs for a single key press, depending on whether you hold it or click it. And as well as those, there's also a couple more like Rappy Snappy and Toggle Switch. But personally, I don't really find those useful, so we're not going to talk about those in this video, but Obviously, if you get the keyboard, you can play around with them. In the software, you can also remap any key to basically any other input, whether it's on your keyboard or mouse. Like I kind of mentioned earlier, you can change the pulling rate from either 16 or 8,000 hertz all the way down to 1,000 hertz. You can create custom macros, but I've never really done anything with macros, so I don't know how intuitive or in-depth this software is. And you can also switch the keyboard to Mac mode, which changes the default inputs to Mac inputs. The 16,000 hertz pulling rate version of the MCHOS A68 Turbo comes in at an incredibly impressive price of only $140 which may sound a bit high if you're not really into keyboards, but for the build quality, software features, and the incredibly high pulling rate that the keyboard has, that price is, like I said, very impressive. The A68 Turbo also comes in five different colorways, which you're seeing on the screen right now. Personally, I've genuinely really enjoyed my time with this keyboard for the past few weeks, but is it worth it? Honestly, yes. If you're looking for a very well-built keyboard that's not too expensive with all the Hall Effect bells and whistles, as well as the lowest latency you can possibly get on basically any keyboard out there, this is a very compelling option. So with that being said, thank you so much for being here. I hope you got something out of this video, and I hope to see you in my next videos.